Hello and welcome to another video on soundproofing. This is going to be a great lesson for those of you who are just starting out. This is the perfect video to watch. This is going to be like the 101 college level soundproofing course that will get you started on your journey through soundproofing. For those of you who have already done some research, this will be a good refresher, kind of remind you of some of the best practices and hopefully give you a huge jump start ahead of everyone else on how to build a soundproof room, a soundproof recording studio, and just become that much better and knowledgeable about soundproofing. I want to say that before we jump in, I do have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. If you like this video, definitely check out the workshop. It's available at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. This will be 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going even more in depth than my YouTube videos can, and you can watch it right away. So again, that's at soundproofyourstudio.com dot com slash workshop. I also want to say that this is a special video because the blog article that I wrote that corresponds with the with this video is actually on the Sonic Scoop blog. So the Sonic Scoop blog is an amazing resource for anything audio recording related. I've uh, read it and watched some of the videos for years, and it is such an honor to have collaborated with them on this blog article. So to check that out, you can click the link in the description below. I'll have it down there so that you can actually read what I'm talking about in this video and go deeper, take notes, things like that. All right. So without further ado, let's jump into this lesson on Soundproofing 101. All right, the first thing we gotta clear up very, very beginning is the difference between soundproofing versus acoustic treatment. This gets a lot of beginners messed up. And the main difference is that acoustic treatment is used to absorb the sound reflections that are hitting your walls. So if your walls are, you know, gypsum board or plaster, whatever it is, sound is going to hit them and bounce off and cause acoustic distortions in your room. So we use acoustic panels, which really are just cloth and fiberglass insulation, and we hang those in specific places around the room to absorb sound and make the room easier to listen in. That is acoustic treatment. Now, soundproofing has nothing to do with that. There's no such thing as soundproof foam. There's no such thing as soundproofing panels. There's no such thing as soundproofing curtains. Those are all marketing terms used to help sell a product, and unfortunately, it kind of deceives you into what it actually does. So soundproofing is using specific construction techniques in the building of rooms to keep sound in and prevent sound from the outside coming in. So we don't want to hear any sound inside going out or any sound from the outside coming in. That's it. That's what soundproofing is. It has nothing to do with insulation, foam, fiberglass like that. It's all about the construction techniques used to accomplish the task of sound isolation. Next thing we would need to talk about are the three basic pillars of soundproofing, and these are mass, air, and decoupling. So with mass, the most important foundation of soundproofing is mass in my personal opinion. It means that we need to add weight to our floor, our walls, our ceiling, our windows, and our door. All of these things need to have mass in order to stop sound. It's pretty basic, but this principle will help you with so many things as you go down this journey. If you have a question like, well, how soon soundproof is this wall? Just ask, how much does it weigh? How much mass did I put on this wall? And you will know that it's going to soundproof better than a wall that weighs less. The second one is air. If there are any air holes in your room, sound can come through the air holes and enter your room and vice versa. This means that when we soundproof a room, we need to make sure that it is airtight. The way that we do this is that we seal all the seams around our walls, our floor, where our walls and ceiling meet, and around our doors and windows with acoustic caulk. Around the doors, instead of using acoustic caulk, what we use are actual special door seals that make it airtight, and we make sure that we build that door so that there's not any air leaks around it. When we do this, we'll have an airtight room where no sound can come in and out through any possible air leaks. The third foundation of soundproofing is called decoupling. And decoupling means that we want to decouple our walls, floors, ceilings from the outside structure. So this is where the concept of a room within a room comes from when you talk about soundproofing. However, the room within a room concept is a little confusing because 
honestly, the best soundproof floor is actually a concrete slab, which means you don't need to float a floor. We'll talk more about that in a second. But the idea is that you would build your outside walls and then build inside walls to create a air gap where you will have better sound isolation. Same with the ceiling, we can use special isolation clips and then metal hat channels and we screw our drywall into the hat channels rather than the actual ceiling frames and this will help decouple the drywall from the ceiling structure. So these are ways that we can make sure that sound does not travel through the outside structure and into the inside structure of our room. As I mentioned earlier, let's talk about the best design options for your floor, ceiling, and doors and windows. We're gonna start with the floor option. And as I said before, this idea that you need to float a floor is actually a little bit misleading. The absolute best soundproof option for anyone out there is to have a concrete floor. The reason, you guessed it, because you have a lot of mass. A concrete slab is what I used in my studio. It works tremendously well. Even if you have a concrete slab in a basement or a garage, that is a perfect starting place to build your soundproof recording studio. If you're working on a second floor of a house, the best option would to be to float a concrete slab. For many DIY home studios, this is completely cost prohibitive and way too complicated. So instead, there are other methods of floating a floor, which I talk about in other videos. But just know that the best option is to have a concrete slab. Now for the wall design, there are two best options that I recommend to all of my clients. Now the first one is going to be your absolute best isolation and that is going to be a double wall system. What this entails is having an outside wood frame or metal frame wall and then you're going to leave a one inch air gap. You're going to have some insulation in between the two walls and then you're going to put two layers of 5 8 inch drywall on both the inside wall and the outside wall. If you're building a studio like I did in the outside, the two layers of drywall can be replaced with o OSB and the hardy board or whatever outside siding you're using with the goal of adding as much mass as possible so that you have equal mass on both sides of your walls. Now, this system works great. It offers a great amount of isolation for a recording studio or a soundproof room. The second option, if you want to save a little space and not frame an actual new wall inside of your room, is to use isolation clips with hat channels. Hat channels are just metal channels that clip into special acoustic isolation clips and they will reduce the amount of sound energy that travels through your wall. The way that this works is you place the isolation clips on your wood studs, you place the hat channels in after that into the iso clips, and then you screw your two layers of 5 8 inch drywall into the metal furring channels or hat channels. This way the actual gypsum board is decoupled from the wood stud wall. Now for the best ceiling design, I recommend the hat channel system that I just described for the wall. The reason is that framing a new independently framed ceiling is more expensive and more complicated, and you can still get great soundproof results from having a hat channel system on your ceiling, saving some ceiling height, because a lot of us are building in shorter rooms when we do DIY home studios, and that way you still get isolation. So put those iso clips on your wood studs above you, hang the hat channels into the isolation clips, and screw your two layers of 5 8 inch drywall into the ceiling, and that is how you get a great option for a soundproof ceiling. Now, one commonly overlooked thing when you're doing soundproofing is the importance of fresh air. Like I had mentioned before, a airtight room is airtight. Therefore, you're not going to get fresh air transfer naturally from the room. A lot of people think their HVAC system, heating and cooling system, will actually transfer fresh air from the outside. The truth is that most, especially mini splits, do not transfer fresh air from the outside into your room and suck stale air out and trans create a transfer cycle. The reason that we need to think about ventilation is that we need a separate system using either an ERV energy recovery ventilator or an HRV heat recovery ventilator to cycle fresh air from the outside, run it through a baffle box, send it into our room, and then also have that same unit pulling stale air out, running it through a baffle box and sending it to the outside. 
This exchange of fresh air means that you'll have plenty of fresh, wonderful oxygen and not heavily CO2 concentrated air in your studio. When we exhale, that CO2 will build up in the studio and cause headaches, fatigue, nausea, and even greater health effects when it's at greater amounts. Lastly, I want to talk about how to build soundproof doors and windows. Now you can always go out and buy a pre-hung window or a pre-hung soundproof door. The problem is it'll cost you upwards of five to $6,000 and that's kind of in the low end. So if you want to save some money and spend, let's say around $1,500 to $2,500 on your soundproof doors and windows, you can build it yourself. The main concept around building your soundproof doors is to have what's known as a communicating door system. This means that you're going to have a door hung on the outside of your transition wall and on the inside of your wall. And there will be a small air gap between those two doors, which will help with the sound isolation. Both doors should be solid core wood doors. This means they're not hollow core, and this will help with soundproofing because of the added mass. Lastly, you got to make sure that your doors have proper airtight sealing around all of the edges of the door. When I recommend doing this, I highly recommend using the Zero International door seals. They are the best on the market. For windows, we're going to use a similar concept. These windows will not be able to open, but they will provide adequate soundproofing and sound isolation and also provide wonderful amounts of light or if you're building a control room window, the ability to see the musicians from the control room into the live room. To build these windows, you simply will need to get laminate or tempered glass, and you cannot use plexiglass or regular float glass, which is what most home windows are made from. The reason is that tempered and laminate glass provide much greater sound isolation than float glass. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that we get two different thicknesses of glass, and this will help with the soundproofing as well because of a phenomenon known as the coincidence frequency. The other thing is we wanna make sure that we get the thickest glass that we can afford. So in my studio, I use 3 8 inch and five and a half an inch uh, for my glass, and I used tempered on one side and laminate glass on the other. Now you can try to get the glass to match the weight of your outside wall as best as you can, and this will greatly improve your soundproofing and sound isolation with your windows. The other thing is we will have an air gap between our windows, and this will also help with the isolation. So whether you're doing the double wall system or just the hat channel system, you still will have a fairly significant gap between the two panes of glass. All right, that was a lot of information and I just breezed through the entire idea of how to build a soundproof room for either recording, home theaters, whatever you need it for. I hope this video was helpful. Again, if you are interested in reading more in depth of what I just talked about, you can check out that Sonic Scoop blog article. Uh, the link is in the description below. If you're on our podcast, it'll also be in the description. Again, if you wanna take a deeper dive than just this 101 video and start getting the knowledge to build your soundproof home recording studio, check out my free soundproofing workshop. You can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, I'll see you all next week with another helpful soundproofing and acoustic treatment video. Mm -hmm.